Good evening, Hepper Spinners. Today, we're going to be talking about Retro Arch, so get ready. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with a Retro Arch series. Uh, and you heard that right, it will be a series because Retro Arch is a beast. Uh, essentially, if you have been living under a rock, or if you're just getting under uh, the emulation spell here, uh, Retro Arch is essentially a hub that allows you to uh, essentially launch a number of different systems uh, using uh, specific cores. Uh, these cores are basically the guts of the original emulators, so you know th this essentially will need to get updated as the emulators themselves get updated, and it's pretty easy to update those cores. So just remember, cores are equivalent to the emulators themselves. But uh, you know, if if you don't want to go the retro arch way. Uh, you can definitely use the original emulators themselves. Uh, the, the one advantage that I see uh, RetroArch having is, you know, you basically set up the controls one time and it, you know, spans across all the different systems. Uh, but in reality, you know, binding your uh, controllers in general isn't a lot of work when we're looking at uh, setting up your single emulators, so it's not a huge deal. But there's also other uh, features that RetroArch supports that, uh, you know, you might not be able to find in the original emulators themselves. So uh, stuff like uh, achievements, if you will. So like if we're talking like, you know, when you're playing Xbox or PlayStation, you might get a trophy or, uh, you know, some sort of uh, award for, you know, accomplishing specific feats. RetroArch has that same sort of thing. Uh, they're called uh, retro achievements. You know, outside of that, uh, you can also, uh, you know, display bezels. Uh, but you know, if you if you're in the scene, uh, using Retro Arch uh, has the same sort of capabilities as you know, let's say uh, Rocket Launcher, for example, which is sort of the guts uh, behind many of the fun ends. So, uh, you know, the bezels aren't a huge uh, win per se, but you know, you might find some of the emulators might work a little bit better on some of these uh, bezels themselves. Uh, outside of that, there's also some shaders. You know, if you guys are really into shading, um, you know, some of these games to make them, you know, look a little more authentic or crisper. Uh, those are the primary advantages that RetroArch has. So uh, what I'm going to do is have uh, a couple series on, uh, you know, this beast of the emulator because there's a lot kind of under the hood here, so I'm going to kind of go bits uh, and pieces. And uh, today it's just going to be, uh, you know, talking about, you know, what RetroArch is all about and setting up some controls. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. You're going to go to RetroArch.com, as you can see here. And you're going to go down to the download section. You're going to find a number of different uh, installs that you can have. So you can see that, you know, it supports anywhere from the Raspberry Pi, Linux, uh, Windows and a number of different consoles as well or Android devices. So uh, that's essentially saying that you can use RetroArch on any of these devices and today we're just going to be talking about uh, PC. So uh, you'll download the uh, bit version that you've got. Most likely it's the 64-bit uh, Windows 10. So you go ahead and click that. The download will take a little bit of time and you can put that on any you know place on your drive. So for these tutorials, I just downloaded it on the uh, C drive to save you guys time. You're gonna see a, there's a bunch of folders in here. You know, it does support cheats as well. Uh, you know, but as does uh, you know most of the emulators themselves. So uh, just kind of keep note there. Uh, these overlays are essentially the bezels themselves, and we're gonna just go ahead and scroll down. So when you're ready to uh, open this and start playing with it you're going to scroll all the way down you're going to find virtual arch xe you're going to open that and you're going to see something that looks like this so what we've got here is a, a ribbon so if you have uh, you know played any of the playstations you know the consoles themselves it's going to be very familiar there's a banner at the top goes left to right and 
what we're essentially going to be doing is setting up the controls. But uh, a couple things that uh, I want to mention here. So I'm just using the arrow keys left down, uh, you know, up, down, and essentially if you push enter, it'll allow you to enter one of these menus. And to go back, uh, what I prefer is using the left mouse, or sorry, the right mouse button. So uh, you can also push the left mouse button to click in and the right mouse button to click back out. So that is how I do it, but you know, there's a number of other ways I'm sure to uh, navigate through this menu, but uh, that is how I do it. So let's go ahead and uh, back out of here. And this first menu here, so load cores. So as I mentioned, your cores are your systems themselves. And we first got to, uh, you know, get those cores downloaded. So uh, we're going to go next to load content. So we're going to ignore that because all the content in general, uh, you're going to be getting from, you know, rocket launcher or hyperspin, you know, launch box, whatever you might have. Uh, so, that, you know, you could use this as a front end if you really wanted to, but, uh, you know, there's much prettier options. Uh, so the only thing that you really care about here is this online updater. This is going to be where you download the cores. Uh, remember, those are the emulators themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. You're going to find a number of things here. So there's install a core from a online updater. You can certainly uh, do that. Uh, you know, some of these medias themselves, uh, you know, Choose your poison if you want to display, you know, artwork, etc. Uh, same with bezels, your cheats. Uh, basically, you're just going to be updating things as you see fit. So what we're going to do is just hit Core Updater. It's going to hit Enter. And you're going to find all of the different emulator cores that RetroArch, uh, you know, supports. So we're just going to scroll down here. We're just going to click on one of these. I don't know. Uh, we'll say PC Engine. Um, Beetle, I'm not really familiar with. Uh, Nico, let's see. Well, what the hey. So we're going to hit uh, Citro here. I'm just going to hit enter. And you're going to see that the online updater is downloading that core. So that's really all there is to it. So you're just going to go through here and just hit enter uh, a number of times to get all of your cores downloaded and uh, ready to go. And, you know, we'll continue talking about that in, uh, you know, the videos to come. So, again, online updater and selecting each one of these emulation cores is basically how you get the emulators bundled all up into RetroArch. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the right mouse button to go back. And, you know, you might do the same thing for update cheats. There you go. It's downloading the file itself update database you'll want to do and overlays if you want but you know for what we're you know trying to accomplish the cheats and the databases and the cores are what you're really after uh, you might do the GLSL shaders if you know you're into that uh, so again remember shaders are a, an advantage to RetroArch so you might do CG shaders as well uh, but you essentially just end up downloading the, the things that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, scroll back here by pushing the right mouse button. And we're just going to go straight into uh, setting up the controllers. So what we're going to do is just go right one time. And you're going to find that there's uh, the gear icon, essentially. You're going to find there's drivers, you know, there's inputs. There's a number of different things here. But uh, this video is essentially going to be focusing on setting up your controls and uh, you know downloading those cores so uh, we're halfway there and as you can see you know these tutorials could get a little lengthy so that's why we're focusing on bits and pieces here so here we go you're going to select input here we're going to hit enter and you can see here we've got the max number of users uh, that RetroArch uh, will you know support you know I I don't know how high this goes, but that's pretty ridiculous. 16 uh, users, uh, you know, what we're after, it, just save it as default. Uh, I think it was three, but uh, you know, that's not important here. What we're gonna be doing is just going straight down here. And what we're gonna do is select user one binds. 
and you know all users control menu you know pick your poison there i've got it set to off it doesn't really bother me here you know if player one or player two's you know messing with control so i'm going to go down to user one binds hit enter and then you're gonna you know select the device i'm just going to push left or right and you can see you know if you have a controller plugged in you can select you know that specific controller uh, but you know i don't have anything set up here but you know we can just leave it as retro pad uh, the device themselves i do have some aim track controllers uh you know plugged in that's why you see that there and what you're going to do is you're just going to go straight down here and you are going to essentially you know select the keys that you want uh, for each one of these so down so I you know I can push uh, enter and then push the down arrow and you'll do the same thing for uh, all these other buttons so uh, you know once you've done all of the mapping you literally just you know push enter and then the key that you want so that's really all there is to it guys when you're setting up the controllers I know that's kind of dry but as you can see, it supports the uh, Xbox controller, uh, you know, number of buttons per se. And you're just going to go in and select each one of those. And once you've done all of that, uh, you will you know, we'll back out of here. And what we do have to do is just save our information. That is one thing that you want to, uh, I guess, remember to do, especially with RetroArch. Uh, you know, once you you know close the uh, emulator itself it might not save so what we're gonna do is just go down here and you're gonna hit save so we can say uh, essentially you know if you want your uh, RAM to save if you want auto saves uh, you know the save states uh, you know th this is specific to the games themselves uh, but what we're after is we want saving our cores per se so i'm kind of reaching here but let's uh scroll back out of this and what we're after is i think it's under configuration yeah so save configuration on exit you want that set to on it will save the majority of your uh items that you've been modifying uh, but what we're after is not that I am looking specifically for configuration file, and there you are. So this is under the, uh, you know, the, the little uh, noid there, and you are going to select save current configuration. I'm going to hit enter, and you've saved it. So it's, you know, this RetroArch CFG. That's essentially where you're saving all of that information. But again, since you're exiting and saving automatically, you know, you can always do that too, but I like to personally save them as I, you know, modify things just to be safe here. So again, that's under the uh, little Galaga uh, little dude. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that is setting up the controls as well as, you know, we talked about, you know, cores themselves and, uh, you know, starting to download some of those emulators. So. Uh, the next one will be uh, focusing on essentially playing with some of these uh, games themselves and uh, maybe mess with some of the shaders. Uh, there's uh, a number of things that we need to uh, talk about with RetroArch. So, uh, very basic tutorial, but I wanted to start getting started because I know a lot of you guys have been asking about a RetroArch uh, tutorial. So, I will catch you next time.